Hey guys, so this is part of the preparation. You gotta clean your reels and make sure that everything is ready for the fishing trip. So I haven't cleaned these reels in a while and they don't look dirty, but once you start cleaning, you'll see how much dirt and gunk comes out of this. So I've got a little toothbrush. I'm just gonna use some sunlight soap over there. And then I'm gonna work through five of my reels and, and see how far we get. Get your spools off, you don't have to wash that. So um, you just wanna wash most of the gunk, you know, out of the reel. I think it's always just a good thing to make sure that you wipe your reels after each session. Because you'll see there's a lot of dust build up while you're standing at the dam. Um, you've got the wind blowing and it's raining, whatever happens. So um, just to prevent that, what I do is my pack up usually takes quite long. Because I make sure I clean my reels, wipe them off and then before a session like this, you don't have a lot of work to do when you're busy cleaning your reels. Get the most important parts done and then you give it a bit of a rinse and that's it, you're ready to go. Okay, that's about good enough. Cool, if you really want to, you can, you know, oil your bearings and all of that stuff. But I don't really get into that because I service my reels regularly. Okay, cool. So that's it. There you go. This is my Aero X. I've only got one reel. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's a very expensive reel. So I've got one of these and then I've got these two DLs that I've been using for, I think the last probably eight years that I've been fishing. And then last year, you know, I, I got these little small ones um, and you've seen on my other video, uh, this is the little Seamos that I'm using, uh, the 640s, and they are quite amazing. Uh, they take quite a punch. So usually I've got about five pound line that I put onto this reel. Um, so over there you go. Five pound long line with my leader on. Um, over here, I've also got five pound line, but you can see the line's quite dirty on there from the previous session. So I use this mostly as a backup reel because my game plan for the weekend is to fish around 65 meters, which I'm gonna use my 10 foot rods for, and I'm gonna use these reels. And then um, I've got seven pound line on these reels. And then I'm, if I need to go the distance, I've got one reel to go the distance with. So that's my game plan, not a very good game plan. Um, I should probably get another reel like this, so if you're watching this and you want to sponsor me, <laughs> please feel free. Cool, so let's get these reels clean. I'm busy packing my box, little tool box, getting that ready. Um, that's a permanent marker that I use to mark my line with. And um, this is what we're going through. So I've got some hook line here, I've got some extra line. Here's some rigs from last time that I need to sort out. Here's some more rigs that I've already made, getting that sorted out and um, some leader line. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with this leader line. Um, I need to actually measure out leader line before the time. And then I've got all my little tackle boxes here. I'm gonna wipe that clean. I have some more leader line. Bought this quite recently. 20 pound leader line. And um, got some bags over there. So quite untidy, box is empty. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, it's a new box. I've just traded in my older box. So we're gonna get this sorted out hopefully before the weekend. So I need to sort out these reels as well. I started cleaning them, you saw that. So what you wanna do is, um, on your spool, I don't know if you can see that, there's always a question, how much line must you, um, you, you know, you put on? So that's how much I've got on this one. 
Um, and then on the other spools, on my DLs, um, you can see that they're running short quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to re-spool this one. And um, this is also running short. I'll have to re-spool those. This is my backup reels. So I'll, uh, you know, as you can see there, I'll have to re-spool that as well. Um, this is where I keep my leader on. It's empty. So we're gonna have to do that before the weekend. Um, so quite a bit of work that I've got for myself here. And I'm gonna start doing that um, before Saturday and get this sorted out. Yeah, I am on the field today and um, I'm gonna be practicing some casting a little bit. I've got this little ball here that we use for casting. Um, and what I'm practicing today is with my 13 foots. Um, what you wanna do is about a week or two before you go and fish, um, practice your distances that you're thinking of casting. And um, if it's 60 meters, do about 30 casts, 40, 50 casts to 60 meters. If it's 80, 90, 100 meters, but you gotta practice this. Um, you don't wanna come to a dam or to the venue that you're fishing and um, for the first hour you're struggling to cast. So you wanna iron out all these little problems while you're on the field, get to a school field. Um, I've got about 140 meters yet to work with and that's exactly what I'm gonna do for the next hour or two. For me today, it's just about distance casting. I practiced um, my 60 meters yesterday. Um, so you wanna do that every single day um, before you actually get to the venue. If you don't do this, if, if this is not your game plan um, and you just wanna go and practice on the day that you get to the dam, obviously it's not gonna work out that well for you. Um, and I've been in this place before um, where I just pitch up at a dam and I start casting. Obviously if you're doing social uh, and a social event then you wouldn't wanna practice, I don't know. For me, I'll always practice before I go, just to iron out some kinks in my casting. Um, for me, it's just never perfect, so I need to keep working on it. But yeah, I'm gonna do a couple of casts, show you what I'm doing, and um, hopefully um, that will help you prepare for your next competition or league, whatever it is that you're going to be fishing. Okay, cool, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my line or from these reels, like I showed you, there's very little line left on here. So I'm using a little drill and a old spool, and I'm just gonna reel it up. I'll show you exactly how to do that now. Okay, so that's it, it's done. Um, all that's left on here is my backing. I've got some mark masking tape that I put over my backing. Um, somebody did that for me in the shop, so that's the line I got off there. I thought it was a lot more, but definitely uh, very little. And if you do it this way, or you've, if you've got a line stripper, you can actually get it on quite tight onto the reels and you can, you know, strip quite a few times on there. So uh, with the backing on here, I can only put about 300 meters or 250 meters on here, and that's what I'm going to do right away. So now I'm putting some line back onto the reels. And that is the longest process actually is over. So, I don't know, some people keep their line in water. I just go for it. Got a little six to guard and go for it. So there you have it, um, I've just completed those two reels, orange and yellow high vis uh, 7 pound line and that is my preparation for tomorrow. Um, you can see how full I've made it, I always put a little bit extra on just in case you break off in the grass and um, you lose about 60-70 meters and then I've put some extra on for that. So um, I prefer to do this in the shop because they've got those nice um, little tools that gets the line very tight. My line is very loose. I'll have to cast it out a couple of times tomorrow uh, just to ensure that it's quite tight. I'm just gonna tie some leader knots, um, show you what I'm doing. I've done a few spools already. I've got two more to go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie about 20 or 30 extra ones on this. So I'm just gonna show you uh, the process of, of what I'm doing. And um, you can check my knot out, the knot I'm using, and then also 
uh, the swivels, small little swivels I'm using um, at the end of each one. Also try to cut that um, line off as fine as possible because these knots are quite strong. So some guys leave about a millimeter, I don't. I just cut everything off um, because you want as little interference when you're busy casting. It's nothing worse than having something um, just hold back when you're busy casting. So cool, that's it, leader knot done. Obviously you can't see that, I'm not using the best camera here. But yeah, that's that's how small that knot is. This definitely saves you quite a bit of time um, when you're at the dam. So you want to do all your leaders as many as you can at home and just save all that time because if you're still busy doing leaders, that is some valuable time that's, um, that you're losing in an eight hour session. I've just uh, completed about 10 leaders. I've got them all reeled up on here, nice and neatly. I'll show you what I do at the end of the last leader you've got a little loop like that and then all I do is I put my snap swivel on already because this is what takes the longest you know at the dam considering that it could be raining um, you could be into the fish which means you don't have time if you've got time to do this at the dam obviously that's cool but um, with league fishing or competitive fishing um, when you're catching about 40 fish in, in eight hours then you don't really have time to do this. Although we've been doing it for so long that it, it does actually go quicker. So um, have a look at this. All I do is that loop over there. I just put my snap swivel in there. Remember, if you're going to use this technique or method, cut this loop off before you make your knot, obviously. <laughs> All right, so there you go. And uh, that's my 10th one that I've made for today. Um, I think I'm, I'm a bit lazy, so I'm just going to leave it at 10 for today. All my spools have got leaders on, so I'm ready for tomorrow. And um, that's it. Boom. Done. Just like that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just making a little dough uh, for tomorrow. So I put a little bit of sugar. I've got some water in here already. And um, all I'm going to do is mix it up and then add some flour. I don't measure it out. There are some measurements that you can use. I'll post them up for you. I just judge with my with my eyes and I know exactly what texture I'm looking for and uh, how much I want. Also, a lot of guys like to flavor their doughs. I don't because I feel like you can flavor it at the water. If somebody says to you that almond is working, you can just take this dough and dunk it into some almond, but put it on your hook and dunk that into some almond or into banana, whatever the guys tend to think is working. Instead of just making, otherwise you're sitting at the dam with like three or four different doughs and, and that is something I've been trying to avoid for a very long time. So mix this up until the texture kind of becomes like rubbery. That's what you're looking for. You saw how little I made. Don't make too much. Um, also don't put too much sugar in. 
the sugar in essence is just to keep this firm. It's not um, for the sweetness of the, of the dough. Although lots of guys tend to make it with Sprite or um, a whole lot of other ingredients. I just tend to keep it simple. You can even make it at the dam with dam water. That will also work. So the, the nick to this is it mustn't stick to your hands. Now once you get to that level, then you've got it 100% correctly. That's perfect. That's exactly the way I want it. That's it. There you go. You're ready for your fishing trip. That's more than enough for an eight hour session.